PS4 video. So we already have an update to the Blu-ray drive exploit that works up to 12.50. Now again, this is a user land only exploit at, at the moment. So yes, it works up to 12.50, but this is only a user land exploit. You cannot jailbreak up to 12.50, of course. We need to basically chain this with an existing kernel exploit to be able to use it to jailbreak the console, which has not been done yet at the time of recording this particular video. And of course, the only kernel exploit we have right now is the lapse kernel exploit, which only works up to 12.02, which is why we'll only be able to jailbreak up to 12.02 with this exploit, even though the exploit on its own works up to 12.50. Hopefully that clarifies that because I have seen some confusion about that uh, recently. So anyway, that is the general idea. So the update here is that it's been transformed into a remote jar loader now, similar to the way the Blu-ray drive exploit on the PS5 works on its own. There is a remote jar loader, so the idea is that instead of having the, the Java files to execute on the ISO itself, the ISO just runs a listener, which then executes jar files that are sent to it over the network from another device like a phone or computer on the same network. And then that way, as new jar files are created, you'll be able to just send them to the console to try out different jar payloads as they come out and as this exploit evolves over time. That is the general idea. So because this is a user land exploit on its own and it's not been chained with a kernel exploit yet, there's not really going to be much that you can do with it on its own. Obviously, there's the Hello World payload, which just prints a notification. We might eventually get an FTP server, which will be sandboxed FTP only. We might see those kind of jar payloads be made available. Maybe some, maybe some Java based games or something like that that you could run. So to set this up, all you need to do is download the log client Python file here and then also go to the releases section and grab the latest release. So download the jar file. So this is just a sample jar file to test it. Obviously, more jar payloads will be added as different payloads get developed that you can also then send to the console for this to execute. But for now, it's just the hello world.jar file. And then we also have the ISO itself to burn to the disk. So download the ISO file and then simply burn it to a disk using whatever software you normally use. I typically use ImageBurn. So with ImageBurn, you just go to write image file to disk, drag and drop the ISO into the program, and then select the option to burn the disk. And then that will get the ISO written to your Blu-ray. Once you have it on your Blu-ray, simply put in the disk into the console and you should be more or less ready to go here. So at this point, you just wanna make sure you have a network connection on your PS4 by heading into the system settings, system, system information, and then check to make sure you have a valid IP address there on your network. So I have 192.168.137.85, which is fine. And then we can go ahead and load our Blu-ray disc on the PS4, and that should get the exploit up and running. Now, another change with this particular version is it will also display the log on screen now on the PS4 itself. So you don't have to use the remote log to get the log on another device. You can just see the log here on the PS4 itself. So it says uh, screen initialized and then we have jar loader listening on port 9025. So we are all good to go there. So if we switch over back to our computer, you can just use most PS4 payload injectors to send the payload. Obviously you can use regular netcat or socat or something like that to send the payload. I'm just gonna use netcat GUI. So if I open up this program here, I'll take the hello world.jar file and drag it inside and then change the port number to 9025, which was the correct port number. And then of course, I also need to enter the correct IP address of the PS5 as well, which was uh, ended in 137.85. And that's it, I can simply inject payload. And when I hit inject payload, we get the execution loading there on screen and we get our hello world payload executed. And that's it, and we get the log also showing the execution and everything that happened on the system as it ran that payload is now showing. And then once it is completed, we get execution completed and then waiting for the next jar on port 9025. So you can send another one. I can keep sending the same payload over and over again, as you can see, hello world, hello world and it will keep printing it on screen. So you can send multiple jar files one after the other using this. Now, if you have Python installed on your computer, you can also get the uh, remote log using the log client Python file here. Basically, we just right click and open in terminal to open up a PowerShell window in the same location as the file, as the log client.py. And then we'll run that by typing in Python and then log underscore client 
PS4.py and then the IP address of our PS4, 137.85 and then the port number which I believe is uh, 18194 it should be and then we we'll just press enter and there we go you can see we get the log now printed on my computer as well so if I wanted to note down the log I could do so. So this is definitely handy for testers because as this exploit continues to get developed especially as it is attempted to get ported with the laps kernel exploit there's going to be a lot of testing that needs to be done and having the blu-ray exploit in this form where developers can create new jar files and test them by just sending them remotely to the console to execute one after the other getting the remote log like this is just going to make things a lot easier. Now this is almost exactly the same way as the PS5 Blu-ray drive exploit is implemented with the remote jar loader, although the jar payloads for the PS5 version will not work on the PS4. We need, you know, specific versions that are created for the PS4 in order to work. So don't try and use the PS5 ones on the PS4, but uh, we will eventually get other payloads, I'm sure like potentially an FTP server payload similar to the FTP snapshot one on the PS5, which gives you sandboxed FTP, which gives you only access to the file system uh, that is contained within the sandbox. So usually just the files for the currently running application. And that's pretty much it until it can be chained with, of course, the lapse kernel exploit when we'll be able to actually use it to fully jailbreak the console. So anyway, that's going to pretty much do it for me. Just a quick update there. We now have a remote jar loader version of the Blu-ray drive exploit for the PS4 working up to 12.50. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.